119 Nocturne Boulevard presents The Dunwich Horror by H.P. Lovecraft Adapted by Julie Overson When a traveler in North Central Massachusetts takes the long fork at the junction of Aylesbury Pike just beyond Dean's Corners he comes upon a lonely and curious country No one even those who have the facts concerning the recent horror can say just what is the matter with Dunwich. With Dave Marshall as Dr. Henry Armitage. Two centuries ago, when talk of witch blood, Satan worship, and strange forest presences was not laughed at, it was the custom to give reasons for avoiding the locality. Glenn Hallstrom as Professor Warren Rice. That's one reason, though it cannot apply to uninformed strangers, is that the natives are now repentantly decadent, having gone far along that path of retrogression so common in many New England backwaters. Lothar Tuppen as Dr. Francis Morgan. They have come to form a race by themselves, with the well-defined mental and physical stigmata of degeneracy and inbreeding. And Charles Austin as Wizard Waitley. of overt viciousness and of half-hidden murders, incest, and of deeds of almost unnameable violence and perversity. Part three of four. Yeah, I don't care what folks think. If Lavinia's boy looked like his pa, he wouldn't look like nothing you'd expect. You needn't think the only folks is the folks hereabouts. Open up! We need help! He's gone gray. Please! Where'd that damn Silas get to? Go away! We need to get the professor laid down, warmed up, and some water. Can't be here. Whipper wills. What's that, Armitage? We're here to investigate the wait lease, and, and our friend collapsed. No help for thou here. Don't know what it is thou's up against. Here, here, shub nigana. Tell Price and Morgan we must do something. It's a blind business, but I, I know how to make the powder of hidden gazi. What's that he said? Let us in, and you can listen all you want while I tend to him. Come through shoppers, then. No need to attract so much attention. I made some use of them books. But the child's fitting to make better use of them. He'd ought to have them as well, so as he can, for they're gonna be all of his learning. Stop them! Stop them! Those Waitleys meant to let them in, and the worst of all is left. Here, swallow this quinine tablet, Professor. This should kill the taste. How much dost thou know? As much as we need. There's something monstrous out there, something that killed the entire Fry family last night, and we are the only ones suited to go up against it. Das things that could have been done yawns back, but none had heed me. Why don't we leave Morgan look after Armitage? And I will be quite pleased to heed any information you care to share. Uh, Lavinia's read some when I forced her. And has eat some things as well that most of you can only tell about. Tell me what thou thinks thou knows. There's no time. There's a monster on the loose brought on by the Waitleys and last night it destroyed an entire family. Seen it, hast thou? The d- destruction, yes. Whatever it was that Wilbur called up, it's monstrous. Called up, eh? <laughs> Not as smart as thou'd like. What? I fair hope thou dost know how to kill it. I could have said how to stop it years agone, but once tis loose, and what it is, it might be aiming to do thou kin. 
I think Armitage does Ken. He alluded to an opening of the gate. Time be a coming. So be brief and tell me anything you can. Some truths can be handed round like sticky candy. Others can only be pointed at for them as wants to reach it down for the cells. Uh, perhaps you can tell me something about the Waitleys. Night Wilbur was whelped. All the dogs in the countryside barked fit to split. Lavinia was 35. Old for a first mother, but no surprise there. I heard she was unappealing. A cow is a cow to a bull in the dark. But the girl was odd. Old wizard fed her mind on strange notions. Had her thinking herself too good for aught of the folks round here. Should have listened to me and took her off. These things that'll get themselves on even the oldest, homeliest womb. <sighs> and here, she come to town with this babe, looking like to a fathered off an ape. It was that dark and hairy. I heard she was an albino. There must have been some contrast. Yeah? If you knowed as much about the hills as I do, you wouldn't ask no better church wedding nor Lavinis. I calculate her man is as good a husband as you can find this side of Aylesbury. Every busybody in the town had a fair day trying to guess the sprig Wilbur sprung from. But none would take that title for his own. Not for all the gold of Old Wizard. Not that old gold offered. And Lavinny. When Otted Pry, she'd get that look. All sly and superior. And brag on about how quickly the little critter was growing. She simply avoided the question? Time to time, she'd be caught muttering curious prophecies about the babe's skills and tremendous future. Always with that pride. Like that hen in the old tale that thinks it gave birth to a mountain. Father says his grandson will bring a change to all things in the world. But my Wilbur is as good and sweet a baby as ever I could want. He been chose to work big things, my perfect boy. Ah, everyone in town spoke about Lavinia as if she were deceased. When did this happen? None say for certain. She never went into hallowed ground. But anyone one thinks twice will say a year back Hallow's Eve. Oh. The hill noises that night were enough to strike your deep. And them dogs was near panic. Fire burned on Sentinel Hill. But that weren't unusual. Oh. <laughs> no one ever go and look but all knew twas Wizard Waitley and his get. A lightning and fires and doing what all else at all the holy and unholy nights. Like May Eve and Candlemas. Yep. Twy the whippoorwills that make it death for Lavinny. Long past flocking, October being a cold, cold month that year. And yet, there they were, screeching like git all at the dark and waitly farmhouse. Sometime after midnight, their shrill notes burst into a kind of pandemoniac cachination which filled all the countryside, and not until dawn did they finally quiet down. Then they vanished, hurrying southward where they were fully a month overdue. Now, whippoorwills, they mean death. And since none other died that night, and Wilbur us still seen tramping about, Tis a sharp jump to thinking that poor, empty-headed Lavinny went and passed. To eternal rest. I beg to doubt. Only them is passed with God's grace reach a peaceful hereafter. <clears throat> them is dabble in dark magics, and I know the dangers. I'm a waitly myself, and not so far as I might think from wizard's kin. Well, they get just what it was they was a-striving for, be it fair or foul. But Lavinia sounds like a victim, not a... a uh... Don't go getting fussy about that. She may have not known what was a Bruin. Probably didn't. But she toiled right smack alongside her pa. And alongside her, um... Her... Wilbur. Though he began to scare even her. There at the end. 
Her pa will this grandfather. He's dead also. They whistle just in tune with me breathing now. And I guess they're getting ready to catch me soul. They know it's going out. And I don't calculate to miss it. Long dead. A four Lavini up and vanished even. Him they buried. So I guess we know who twas got the respect in that house. He hasn't been fed since Wilbur died, and at that rate... He fixin' to be all right? Seems a might seasoned. Negotium, perambulans, and tenebris, and... For this piece of work? He was very sick recently. He really needs more rest. And to go facing off with this thing. Armitage prepared a number of items, a powder, some words, in case of just such emergencies. We'll be ready. And I brought a big game rifle. Just in case there's anything to shoot at. Let me tell you something. Someday you folks will hear a child or Lavinis a calling its father's name from on top of Sentinel Hill. How is he? Sleeping peacefully. Now. Just a touch of the fever exacerbated by heat stroke, I would say. But he's still frail. From before. The quinine should handle it, but we still need to keep him drinking clean water with a touch of salt. What the planning then? If it were to fall to me to decide, I should try at first to catch up to the thing by daylight. These creatures are often weaker in the pure light of the sun. Eh, yep. Them as come from darkness cannot abide God's face. They don't like being seen. Need to get back to my fliver and fetch a few things. Armitage should rest peacefully for a bit. <sighs> More space, Willie. More space soon. You grows, and that grows faster. It'll be ready to serve you soon, boy. Can you tell us anything about this thing? Armitage has studied and conjectured all he can, but anything you can help us would be gratefully appreciated. What does thou think thou knows? Oh, well, it is large. Big enough to stove in a house. Not to mention it must have broken out of the old Waitley place. Them fetid cattle. Trotted them right up a ramp on the side of the place like a regular slaughterhouse. <sighs> oh, uh, they must have summoned it inside the building then. Donkey's piss. <clears throat> Thou <clears throat> want here for Wilbur's life, and cannot ken, but it were growed. Once, t'was small enough to fit through the most natural gateway into this world of ours. Which is... But anything will grow. Tis fed enough, and this thing, well, it et and et. Feed it regular, Willie, and mind the quantity. If it busts quarters or gets out before it opens to yog sotan, it's all over and no use. Only them from beyond can make it multiply and work. Only them, the old ones, as wants to come back. You can't be thinking... We sadly don't need your permission. You'll get yourself done, but good. Police? All the way out here? Hello! Oh, please be someone that talks normal English. I'm from Arkham. Finally. I've had enough of these blasted hicks to last me all week. Hicks? Well, I never. Shh. I'll see if I can't talk some sense into these good police officers. <sighs> You'll know, boys, our time gone. Whether them whippoorwills get me or not. If they do, they'll keep us singing and laughing until the break of day. If they don't, 
they'll kind of quiet down a bit. Rice? Morgan? Armitage? Pardon me. Are you all right? <laughs> Weak. Should have known better than to chance a swig off that bottle of Morgan's. Uh, is he... Go back to the auto, but not until he was sure you were through the worst. Did I babble much? Enough to get us an invite into this charming abode. Would you like to come out and meet a waitly cousin? I think I'll rest a bit longer, but please, pass along my sincerest gratitude for the shelter. I will. <clears throat> I'm glad you're not, uh... Seconded. I expect them whippoorwills and the souls they hunt for have some pretty tough tussles sometimes. We didn't haul our fannies this far into the middle of nowhere just to turn tail and ramble back home. You don't understand what you're dealing with. Monsters. Ah. These people believe anything. Have you taken a good look at the... The house there? What's left of it? A fire. Maybe an explosion. If there's any creature involved, it's probably a bear. A bear? Or perhaps escaped from a circus. Or one of them big monkeys. <laughs> I said either a bear or... Or? Well, more likely it's what we're always dealing with out in the boondocks like these. Which is? Bootleggers. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how crafty these hick buggers can be. But the prince in the road. Done to frighten the yokels. In that house. Probably where they were making the swill. These idiots don't think twice about the fact that liquor burns. It's a going again. And this time by day. It's out. It's out and a moving this minute. And only the Lord knows when it'll be upon us all. All oh, saints preserve us. Where? Where is it? I'm down to carriage him. It was Miss Carey. What put you fellas up last night? He says Luther was out driving the cows when he sees all the trees abandoned at the mouth of the glen, opposite side to this, ah. and smelt the same awful smell like he smelt before. My good God! He says they was a swish and lapping sound, more than what the bending trees and bushes themselves could have made. And all of a sudden, the trees along the road began to get pushed to one side. It's an awful stomping and splashing in the mud. A giant monster. My dear Luther, he never seed nothing at all, only just the bending trees and underbrush. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, a giant invisible monster. It all makes sense now. Where did it go to? Did they see? Are you actually pandering to this nonsense? Whether this is a monster or a bear or a flaming punch-drunk gorilla, people are dead and someone needs to stop it. Let's go then. You've taken leave of all your senses. Yeah, we see this all the time, trying to put us off. Where is it you said it went? Cold Spring Glen? Where else? I really think this is a bad idea. Good. You can come along with us. Only if I can bring my gun. The more the merrier. Ea, shove nigger off, as a foulness shall ye know them. Their hand is at your throats, yet ye see them not, and their habitation is even one with your guarded threshold. What the devil is that? It's an elephant gun. Nonsense. Elephant gun's too long for the luggage compartment. This is a 475 caliber Cordite Double Express. That's a mighty big pea shooter you got there. <laughs> That's the other name for it. Won't do you no good, though. Not against what's down there in the glen. We'll see about that, won't we? Come on, boys. Help me with the Tommy guns. Five of those will top your rifle any day. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. You folks here, this is official government business, see? If you got friends down in what you call Gold Spring Glen, this is the time to send ahead and tell them to clear out. We're going in there and we're loaded for bear. We're gorilla. Yeah, once the bullets start flying, there's no telling who might get hurt. Keeping up this monster charade isn't going to do you any good. Mister? Your heater, Frank. Thanks. Everybody ready? Ready, boys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Officer? What? Uh, what should we do with your automobile when you folks don't come back? Uh, 
Open up the gates to York Sothoth with this long chant you'll find on page 751 of the complete edition. And then put a match to the prison. Fire from Earth can't burn it no how. First, it was the shed. All tight up clabbered since Wilbur was born. Then one day, open and airing and smelling like thunder. Right about the time Wizard started in on this carpentry, making changes inside the house itself. Why was that? That's when they added the ramp for the cows. So this thing, this creature that's loose now, had grown too large for the shed? Yep. And just a few months back, Wilbur moves himself into the shed. After knocking out all the walls back inside. Give us some frame of reference for size, at least. But what thou don't realize is... Mr. Armitage? Mr. Armitage! Hush him! That boy'll bring down the wrath of God! I'll go. Mr. Armitage? Shh, calm down. Come inside. To know that I should, mister. Old Widow Zebulon here, well, she, uh... What has happened? It was on the lines again. They heard it. i just come back from driving in the cows, and, and Miss Corey sent me right back out. Since worse it happened, since I was gone. What happened? She says there was another call. Lord, help me. Who is it? Silly, up to St. Bishop's. Oh, God, I just see the trees abandoned beside the road. Sally, get yourself out of the house now. No, no. If she sets foot out, it'll surely spy her. What does it look like, woman? It don't look like nothing but air, but I can smell it and I hear a sort of breathing, all mushy and puffing. It's coming closer. It's just like the smell from before, ma. We got to run. I don't know what to do. Some dogs is barking something awful. Ah, the shed, the shed down the road. It just came right in. What's in that storm in 99? I know when, Mom. Leave the phone and run. Sally, you got to move, dear. I can't. The front fence just up and crumbled and there's no sign of what might done it. What the devil? Ah, too late. God. Mom? Run, Chauncey. Run up back. I don't know what it might have been, but something struck the house. Uh, I heard the wall crack at that point, but there's nothing outside. What could be it doing this? Come on, woman. This God's judgment on us all for our iniquities. It's got a lot to do with God. Uh, uh, the house is a cave in. Uh, After that, just silence. Them that heard it got out the wagons and rounded up as many able-bodied men folks as they could and come up here to see what you thought best to do. They're over at the Fry Ruin now, waiting on you. I think we ought to. It's time, Warren. Armitage had a sound physique despite his 73 years and slept off his disorder without developing any real fever. He woke clear of head, though sober with a gnawing fear and tremendous sense of responsibility. There. You can see where it's gone. Keep going. No. I've seen what it can do. You can't make me take one step further. (laughs) If you run out on us now... We're within the law to shoot you. There's worse things than being shot. Like being killed? Worse than that. This has gone far enough. Can't you see that man is terrified? Nah, banana oil. He's just trying to slow us down, keep us from getting to the party on time. Then stop wasting time on him. 
and move on. What did you say you were doing out in this neck of the woods again, pal? That's Professor, officer. And you never asked me. We are asking now. I study folklore. What? Local stories and legends. Figuring out what started them. Why? Because uncovering events that cause superstitions, revealing the misunderstandings or natural phenomena that lead to unusual beliefs, such as those that are particularly prevalent in these sorts of rural areas, can lead to a better understanding okay, of... Okay, okay, stifle. He's a professor, all right. Let's move. Yeah, boss. Yes, sir. No wonder none of them college boys is worth a tinker damn. It's full of that sort of shit. <laughs> you coming, Prof? Yeah. If I could stop you, I would, but since I can't, the least I can do is try to... to help. And maybe get some kind of look at this thing. <laughs> yeah. By their smell can men sometimes know them near, but of their semblance can no man know. That shape without sight or substance which is them. What's all this? Where's Morgan? God, I tell them not to go down into the glen. I never thought nobody do it. What with them tracks and the smell and the... Whippoorwills are screeching down there in the dark on noonday. <gasps> Cold Spring Glen? What other place would be jabbering about? Tell me that. But, but Morgan... Gone along behind. At least he took his gun. You said that should have no effect. <laughs> Good God. Come along, sirs. We can't stay here. No. This must end. Now. Go, Henry. I have the powder. If I can find Morgan, I can... No. It will likely require the both of us. We must follow it, boys. I believe we have a chance of putting it out of business. You men know that those Wakeleys were wizards. Well, this is a thing of wizardry and must be put down by the same means. You? A wizard? Well, I've seen Wilbur Wakeley's diary and read some of the strange old books he used to read. And I think I know the right kind of spell to recite to make the thing fade away. <laughs> Of course, one can't be sure, but if, if we don't take a chance, then nothing will ever stop it. It's invisible. I, I knew it would be. Uh. But we've got this powder in this long-distance sprayer. That should make it show up for a second. Later on, we'll try it. <sighs> Give us something to aim at. It's a frightful thing to have alive, but it isn't as bad as what Wilbur would have let in if he'd lived longer. You'll never know what the world escaped. We hope. Now we've only this one thing to fight, and it can't multiply. It can do a lot of harm, though, so we mustn't hesitate to rid the community of it. Someone said there were tracks that went up one of these hills. Up Sentinel Hill. Yeah. But you don't want to go through there. You go down in the glen, you might as well slit your own throat. Ah, and climb into the belly of the beast on top of it. We need to get in front of it before it moves again. I don't know your roads very well, but I have an idea there might be a shorter cut across lots. How about it? I guess you can get round to Seth Bishop's quickest by cutting across the lower meta here, wading through the brook at the lower place and climbing through Carrier's Moen and the timber lot beyond. That comes out on the upper rud mighty nigh. Seth's a little to the other side. That's where um, it was this morning? Best get started. We'll have to walk if Morgan's not here to drive. He'll be fine. It was irresponsible of him to go on. Ah! 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 Oh, good God. Morgan. Oh. Your hair. Oh. Someone catch it. Thus endeth part three of the Dunwich Horror from the classic story by H.P. Lovecraft, adapted by Julie Hoverson. In the Dunwich Horror. 
Professor Henry Armitage was Dave Marshall. Professor Warren Rice was Glenn Hallstrom. Dr. Francis Morgan was Lothar Tuppen. The voice of the Necronomicon is Lord Bloodraw. Wilbur Waitley was Danner Hoverson. Wizard Waitley is Charles Austin. Lavinia Waitley is Julie Hoverson. Miss Ward is Elise Crawick. Mrs. Armitage is Chris Kepler. Dr. Hartwell is Chris Lackey of the H.P. Lovecraft Literary Podcast. Curtis Waitley is J. Spider Isaacson. Mamie Bishop is Beverly Poole. Earl Sawyer was Rick Lewis. Silas Bishop is Eli Nilsson. Joe Osborne is Renaud LaBeouf. Mrs. Corey is Robin Keyes. Mrs. Fry is Kimberly Poole of Warped Space. Luther Corey is Matthias Rebney Morgan. Widow Zebulon is Reese T.M. Sally Bishop is Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard of Gypsy Audio. Chauncey Bishop is Mike Campbell. Officer Williams is Jack Kincaid of Edict Zero and Slipgate Nine Productions. Officer O'Reilly is Michael Coleman of Tales of the Extraordinary. The other police officer is Chad Pfeiffer of the H.P. Lovecraft Literary Podcast. Seth Bishop and additional voices by Mark Olson and the Dunwich Townsfolk. Music for the Dunwich Horror is by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. The cover art is by Julie Hoverson. The ferocious guard dogs Quinn and Spencer Dutkowski appeared courtesy of their personal sound engineer, Donna. Additional effects by Henry Howard. No whippoorwills, alive or dead, were harmed in the making of this show. Much thanks to Fred Greenhog of Radio Drama Revival. Sound and mastering was done by Julie Hoverson. Sound effects were found at soundsnap.com, sonomic.com, and onesoundfx.com. All persons, places, and events in this story were fictitious or used in a fictitious manner and are not meant to reflect any persons, places, or things, living, dead, undead, or outside our three-dimensional realm. Questions? Comments? We would love to hear from you. Contact us at 19nocturne at live.com, that's 19nocturne, or visit our website at www.19nocturneboulevard.com. This presentation is copyright 2011 to Julie Hoverson and Reality Productions and is released under a Creative Commons non-commercial license. Spread the show around, but don't try to make money off it. <laughs>